Well, hello there. Um, I'm gonna do a uh, another video. This time it's going to be, um, and it's gonna be another example video. This time, uh, kind of representing. It, it'll be a little bit more like something you'd see in Poe. You, we also just saw a problem like this for um, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, that we had to do in class today at some point, or recently, depending on how far ahead your class is. So what we have is we've got some kind of mass. Uh, uh, how, how do I move this? Crap. Uh, we have some kind of mass here, if I can move this. And it's being suspended by two cables, right? And it's being held up somewhere out there. And we want to find out, we'll say the mass is um, 10 kilograms. Crap. Uh, let me use the text tool because I'm a cool kid. So, where's the eraser? Where'd the eraser go? There it is. Boop. Boop. Okay. So, we're going to say that the mass is 10 kilograms, and then by now you should know that to get the weight we're going to just multiply uh, that 10 times the acceleration of gravity. So that's going to be 9.8 times 10. You know what that is. That's 98 newtons, right? Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Hopefully that's pretty clear. Uh, oh, look, okay. Um, so next what we have to do is we have to... They're probably going to ask for how much force is each of these, or rather, like, how much weight, how, yeah, how much force is each of these, um, s like, strings, ropes, wires, cables, whatever, supporting? Uh, there's a couple steps to that one thing. And, uh, first what we gotta do is we gotta kinda anal let's just take what we know and work from there. So, we know that gravity is pulling this thing down with a force of, we said, 98 newtons, right? So it's 98. So that means that something has to be pulling up at 98 newtons, correct? Oh, and also let's say this is an angle of 20 degrees. Forgot to give you that. So let's say that this is pulling up. Well, this is a horizontal line. So this can't be exerting any upwards force, can it? No. So this has to be 98, right? This wire alone, the Y portion of it, has to pull up with that, that whole 98 newtons. So what does that mean? Well, that means that, well, if this, an if this angle is 20, it should make some sense to you that this angle is also 20. So if you think about it, that kind of means that, um, say this, we're going to call this R for the right-hand cable, the force of the right-hand cable. R times the sine of 20, that just means the height of this, that means how much this string is pulling in the vertical direction, in the Y direction. That has to equal... 98, right? Because that has to pull up on the entire weight of this mass. So, in this case, it has to pull up the whole 98. Well, we know what sine of 20 is. We can just do that with a calculator. We type in 20 and hit sine. Or, in your case, you'll probably type in sine and then type in 20, you know, PI 84 or whatever. So we get 0.342. So, R times 0.3 4, 2 equals 98. And then, I mean, this is a pretty simple algebra. That looks like an A, I'm sorry. It's an R. So we just end up with, if you uh, divide the two, if you're solving for that R, you end up with R equals what is it? Don't pay attention to the way that I'm doing this, because I'm just doing this in a way that makes it a little bit simpler. Or maybe I'm not, if I can't find the button. 
button, button, who's got the button? Oh well. Um, so it's going to be 98 divided by 0.342. That's equal to 286.5. So 286.5. So there, we already found how much force this overall cable is pulling. Is pulling. Now we know that mm, this part of it right here is 98, right? Because it's got to be pulling up enough to keep the bag or whatever it is upright. So then, uh, what's this part? How how much is it pulling sideways on the uh, on the bag of laundry or on the weight or whatever? How much is it pulling sideways? Well, it, if you remember, it's this, it's the cosine is kind of like that x piece right there. So r times the cosine of 20 equals, well, how much this is pulling. But wait a minute, if this x piece is pulling this direction in some amount, well then how is it staying still? That's because this cable, the L, is pulling in the opposite direction the same amount. So really, that r times the cosine of 20 is equal to the L. Um, it's L in the x direction, really, but since all of L is in the x direction, it's horizontal, the entire, it's just going to be the value of L. And we know r, we know cosine of 20. Yay, party. Okay, so cosine of, uh, let's see, flip the calculator where you can see it. Uh, crap. Okay, so cosine of 20, so clear, 20 cosine of that. So we're taking that cosine times r, so times 286.5 equals uh, 269. And that should make sense that maybe this one's going to be pulling a little bit harder than this horizontal one, because this one's got to be supporting all of this actual weight as well. Um, but it makes sense that they shouldn't be pulling about even, almost. I mean, they're kind of they're kind of close because it's uh, uh, how, how do you say? This is actually not like I drew it. It's actually a pretty shallow angle. So the way it comes out to be is like this and this. So it makes sense that they should be about the same force. See, this is L right here. This 269. That was R 286.5. Um, so it, it should kind of make sense that, for the most part, they're actually pretty close. Um, oh, it's, it's just the way that it works out. So basically, the way that you solve this kind of problem is, well, first of all, you look at the weight, and you figure, okay, well, this y component must equal the weight, or, in case of, like, uh, Dr. Christo's example, like, say it's like this, well, that means that this y component plus this y component has to equal this weight. So here we've got r sine 20 plus l sine whatever this is, say uh, 50. 50. Um, then it, that would be l sine 50 would be this height. So if you add those together, you have to get 98. And then you also know that the l cosine 50, this x piece, this how much is pulling it, so how much, or rather, how much of this is pulling sideways um, has to be equal to however much this is pulling sideways. So then you can say that L times the cosine of 50, right, that's this horizontal piece, must be equal to R times the cosine of 20. And then you've got, well, let me write it out, L, L times the cosine of 50 is equal to r times the cosine of 20. Uh, and so you got that. And then we also said that l times the sine of 50 plus r times the sine of 20 has got to be enough to lift this, right? The sum of the two vertical parts has to be enough to lift the mass. So that has to be equal to 98. Uh, so then uh, you plug in the values, you plug in, uh, you find out what cosine of 20 and cosine of 50 are, you find out what sine of 50 and sine of 20 are, you do all the values, and you get two equations, and you have to solve the system of equations, and 
Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm not going to explain all that. I will do that in the next video. So I'm going to save this and teach how to do that in the next video. Ah, actually, no, I'm not. Um, yeah, I am. I'm, hmm, let me think, what should I do? No, I don't think I am. Let me know if you have trouble with this. Um, note that, um, Mrs. Orozco and Dr. Martino, they're not going to put this on any of, uh, they're not going to make you solve any systems of equations. They're going to say, just give you this horizontal line and one diagonal line, like they did in the uh, team solving problems. But uh, if you do want me to do a video on this, let me know and I will. Um, I hope this helps. I'm going to be posting this video momentarily. Hopefully my videos have helped you so far. Um, next I'm probably going to be tackling a couple physics problems, teaching you a little bit about trust analysis. Or I made, um, I know a, a couple people were asking on Facebook for me to do a couple types of videos, so I'm going to look at those and possibly do something like that. Um, I don't know what my next video will be, but uh, I'll see you then.